Throughout the development of World of Warcraft, classes have changed considerably. Some would argue that they've changed for the better, some would argue that they've changed for the worst. Nonetheless, today, we are going to be looking at the history and development of Death Knight pets over the lifetime of World of Warcraft, and if this video does well, I will do the history of Death Knights in their entirety. So to tell this story, we have to go all the way back to 2008, to the dawn of the Wrath of the Lich King expansion. But before we do that, it would be pretty dope if you hit that sub button, because that really helps me out. But anyway, let's jump in. So back in Wrath of the Lich King, when Death Knights were finally released, they were ludicrously overpowered, and then every single patch in Wrath of the Lich King nerfed them to the point where they were still overpowered, but somewhat less. But back in these days, every single Death Knight, no matter what spec you played, was given the raised dead spell that would raise a ghoul from a nearby humanoid corpse. This could be an enemy corpse, had to be humanoid though, or even one of your fallen comrades. If either of those were not nearby, you would need a reagent corpse dust that could be bought from the Death Knight trainers in Arcarus v Ebon Hold. However, there was a glyph later released that would remove that reagent requirement. The ghoul would be alive for a 1 minute duration as a temporary pet that would automatically attack whoever the Death Knight was attacking, although most people just used Raise Dead in a kind of spell combo with Death Pact to sacrifice the ghoul for 40% of your total health returned. People used to put it in a macro to make the process much faster and easier. However, if you were a true Chad and specced into the only true Death Knight spec, Unholy, you would get to the Master of a Ghoul's talent that made the Ghoul a permanent pet under your control with its own unique abilities. First you had Claw, which is the pet's main energy dump for increased damage. You had Leap that made the Ghoul, you know, pretty self-explanatory leap to the target, and you also had Nort, which was a 3 second stun back in those days on a 1 minute cooldown, and what you would do, if you were doing arena, you would set up a macro, like a focus macro, for the pet to like leap, and then go and stun the enemy healer, or you would use it to chase down a ranged enemy. You also had Huddle, which reduced the damage melee and range attacks had on your ghoul, it was only really useful if someone actually decided to train your pet, because it would make the pet not doing anything other than just stand there and huddle. There was also a spell called Ghoul Frenzy that would grant your pet 25% extra haste for 30 seconds and heal the pet for 60% of its health over the entire duration. Unholy at the bottom of a tree also had a talent point which unlocked a temporary pet called the Gargoyle. In Wrath, it cost a big chunk of runic power, would last for 30 seconds and continuously shoot a casted nature spell similar to a Boomkin's Wrath onto the enemy that you basically targeted. It would benefit from your current stats like a snapshot when you pop the gargoyle, so you would always use trinkets, cooldowns and bloodlust before you popped gargoyle. Some people also like to switch to unholy presence very quickly, then pop gargoyle and then switch back to blood presence, which meant it would get Something like one or two extra casts off just weren't popping it with unholy presence. Apart from this, you also had the Army of the Dead spell and the Raise Ally spell. Army of the Dead would summon an entire army of basically loads of undead minions, which was pretty cool, who would attack and taunt basically everything in sight, which was really put overpowered with solo content. You could basically solo any elite quest that you wanted with this ability. But most tanks would throw a little bit of a tissue fit because Obviously, the little lads, they do taunt, and it can mess up a tank's aggro generation. Raised ally back then would actually allow a friendly player to take control of a ghoul for five minutes, which is pretty cool, it had the basic abilities that, you know, a ghoul has, rather than it being an actual combat res. And the last thing to talk about, really, is there were temporary pets called bloodworms, which have a chance to spawn on a weapon swing, which was a talent in the blood tree, and they would also heal you for the damage dealt, so they were pretty cool. In Cataclysm, not much change, you know, there's always you know, some tweaks here and there, but really the biggest addition was Dark Transformation, which added a little bit more micromanagement for your pets. Every time you use Death Coil, the talent Shadow Infusion would increase the ghoul's damage by 6% for 30 seconds and it would stack 5 times. And then when fully stacked, you could pop Dark Transformation, which buffs the pet's damage and transforms the pet into one of the most badass looking creatures in the game in my opinion. His ability is also changed to become more powerful. 
Claw will now do 150% of normal damage instead of 125 and spread to three additional targets. Leap actually turns into a charge, will interrupt spell casting and immobilize a target for two seconds, and then Gnaw now deals 125% damage and stuns the target for four seconds instead of three seconds. And then Huddle, that basically buffs the ghoul with a 50% damage reduction for 10 seconds and he wouldn't go into a defensive crouch where he can't move, he can still run around and do whatever he wants. So Dark Transformation made your ghoul an absolute monster for damage and PvP utility, so the trick was to keep him in Dark Transformation for as long as possible. The simple trick to do that would be to pull Runic Power before Dark Transformation is about to fall off, then when it does fall off you pump your death coils and stack up Shadow Effusion again very quickly and if you got very lucky with a sudden Doom proc which gave you a death coil with no Runic Power cost, he could go straight back into Dark Transformation within the space of like, you know, under 10 seconds, and you'd basically be in Dark Transformation more than you would be without it. In Mop, there wasn't any major additions. Shadow Infusion gets buffed to 10% per stack. The AoE Claw ability from Dark Transformation gets nerfed to two additional targets instead of three, so basically more single target damage, less AoE damage. Plus, this is when they added a crazy amount of avoidance stat for all pets, to the point where pets really just never took any damage and rates. We also get Control Undead in Mists, which is the same as a Warlock's Enslaved Demon. Not much to talk about here, it was just a cool gimmick spell that people use sometimes in the open world, although you could use it in some dungeons, particularly challenge modes, because it was a big advantage if you weren't an unholy death knight, because it was basically a free pet. And then this is when Ray's ally became really boring and it just became a combat res, which to me doesn't really make much sense because why on earth would a death knight be able to resurrect people? They are literally the antithesis of a, like, you know, paladin holy warrior thing. Then we have Wallows of Draenor. This is when, in my opinion, they kind of ruined death knight by pruning all the abilities and I just totally quit the game. I think I played a little bit as a monk instead. You know, Ray's dead, only available to Unholy Death Knights, so Frost and Blood Death Knights can't have a temporary pet. Blood Parasites were totally removed, and then Army of the Dead was only given to Blood Death Knights, which was even more weird. In Legion, though, I have to admit, the changes to Unholy Death Knight were an absolute godsend compared to Walls of Draenor. So, first of all, Dark Transformation becomes a cooldown spell rather than, you know, it buffing from Shadow Infusion. And you can also use a number of different glyphs and talents to get different pet appearances, which was pretty cool. Like the Geist, the Sludge Belcher, and even a Valkyr Valkyrie, whatever you call them, that's a really weird pronunciation. Dark Transformation also made the Sludge Belcher look like Festigut from Icecrown Citadel, and the Valkyr would actually replace the Gargoyle. There's also a talent called All Will Serve, which when you summoned a ghoul, you'd also get a little skeleton who was a little pocket hunter with a steady shot and a multi shot. The Sludge Belcher totally changed the abilities, although they are the same. They just have a different name, although one of them is a little bit different actually, to be fair. So Cleaver instead of Claw, and then that turns into Vile Gas when Dark Transformation is active. Anyway, Gnaw becomes Smash, and for some reason it's only a one second stun in Legion. No idea why they decided to do that. Anyway, Leap actually becomes Hook. So Death Knight's actually given a second death grip, which I imagine was very useful in Rate of Battlegrounds at the time. But then if the pet, you know, fails the hook, he will just get Leap to the target instead. Then you have Huddle, which becomes Protective Bile and gets buffed with Dark Transformation to Gastric Bloat. They actually fixed Army of the Dead as well to give it to the actual spec that it belongs to, which is obviously unholy, and then they totally removed the taunt effect, although to be honest I think Army of the Dead should just be given to every single Death Knight in my opinion. And then there was also a glyph to make all the ghouls in Army of the Dead look like a totally unique undead mob. Your artifact weapon also had like some extra ghouls that would summon whenever you use the artifact weapon ability and it also have a small chance to summon a ghoul that would walk towards your enemies and explode. And this would also happen with your army of the dead ability when they died. So overall they just added about 20 million different pets in Legion which was totally awesome and I'm, I'm really miffed I didn't get to play you know, Death Knight in Legion, although I did actually get to play it a little bit in BFA, and I have to admit, it was probably one of the greatest states of Death Knight that I've ever played, apart from, you know, Wrath until Mr. Pandaria. 
In BFA, there was only some minor changes. First of all, the Valkyrie thing, where it swapped your gargoyle, that wasn't a talent. It became a cosmetic glyph. Then your dark transformation, when it expired, the ghoul would actually deal explosion damage. It wouldn't actually die, though. And then you also have this uh, perk called Mages of the Dead, which summoned an extra undead spellcaster when you used Apocalypse. In Shadowlands, there's some minor tweaks. What happens really is the Azerite perks and the Artifact Weapon perks come back as Covenant abilities with a different name, just kind of rebranded. You also gain this spell which can sacrifice your pet and it explode, actually will explode your ghoul and kill the ghoul and do big AoE damage to 8 nearby enemies and also heal you for 25% health. There's also a new Roof Forge in Shadowlands which makes the ghoul have a chance to apply certain debuffs, it can reduce the damage dealt to the DK, reduce healing done, slow the target and deal damage over time, or increase damage taken from the Death Knight. Also, when Dark Transformation activates, there's this chain between you and your pet that deals shadow damage when anyone becomes, you know, in between it. The spell it has also been combined very recently, actually, in September, to the Apocalypse spell, so basically it's been pruned into one spell. And there we will conclude the video. That is a summary of how Death Knight pets have changed over the course of World of Warcraft's lifetime. If you want me to make a more detailed video talking about everything about Death Knight and how they've changed over time, it will be a very, very big video and probably take me an entire week to make. So it's a big commitment. I'm only going to do it if people actually want to see that video. So yeah, tell me in the comment section below. I have been wanting to make that video probably for about five years now. But anyway, my name is Amelie Goblin. To my next video, ciao.